sounds like you guys were as obsessed with cool math games as I was. I received requests for a ton of games since that first video, and some of these I adore, and other ones I have never heard of in my entire life. So let's add to that original list today. That first video had some of the most classic games, like Run and Duck Life, so you should definitely start there before watching this one. There are way more awesome cool math games out there though, and who knows, maybe we'll find some hidden gems today that you've never even heard of. Our next group of games include Snoring, Big Tower Tiny Square, Johnny Upgrade, B Cubed, Tiny Heist, Cargo Bridge, Moto X3M, 60 Second Burger Run, IQ Ball, Farafala, Truck Loader, Raft Wars, Hangman, Diggy, Awesome Tanks, Color World, There Is No Game, Trace, Space is Key, Eggy Car, Balloons Tower Defense, and Red Ball. Yep, I'm making you wait until the end for the big boys. Now, without further ado, let's find out which of these are the greatest cool math games games, and which ones put our elementary school teachers to shame. For those of you who didn't play this one as a kid, it probably looks like some random boring toddler game. And while it is a random boring toddler game, it's the best random boring toddler game. In each level, there's a sleeping elephant that you must wake up by pushing them off a cliff. Look, it's the only way, alright? I definitely would not murder them if I didn't have to. Don't die! Don't die! Each animal has their own little quirk, and some like the cow are especially lol random. We can all agree the penguins are the coolest though, right? Anyway, some of these puzzles are genuinely hard. They can have such precise timing or require patience, to the point where I don't even think many Gen Z kids could get through these levels. This game actually works as an educational thing for kids, and it's a great introduction to puzzle games. This was definitely one of the first puzzle games I ever played, and I loved it. Playing it today, it's actually pretty dang fun. Snoring is far from boring, and I grin every time there's an epic win. I'm a toddler genius now, and I beat the whole thing, and as a proud elephant killer, I am honored to give it an A tier. If I had to guess, I'd say that Big Tower Tiny Square was the most requested game from the last video. Clearly there was something special here, and oh boy was I excited when it loaded up. It's basically just a long Super Meat Boy level as you climb this massive tower. Each level fills the entire screen and you snake all the way through each layout before reaching the next. The beginning makes you feel like a platforming god, but once you get towards the top there are less and less checkpoints and your skills are truly tested. When I make videos like this, I usually give each game about 20 minutes or so, especially games that could easily take hours to beat. But after a little bit of the first level, I was hooked. I knew I had to do it all. I would love to tell you that I was surprised about having to go back down after beating it, but this guy literally goes, man it would totally suck to have to do this backwards. And then I looked at the room and I was like, oh yeah, you can definitely do this backwards. Thankfully the top is the hardest, and you get to do a nice little stroll through the park towards the end of the game. I just adore little games like this. I know I dogged on Jelly Escape last time, but it just really is not as fun as this game. It's so simple, literally everything is made out of squares. It's like Minecraft almost! I don't know, I could probably gush about how much fun I had, or we can just move on and give it the S tier it so clearly deserves. People were really excited about Johnny Upgrade too, and before I even put my hands on the keyboard, I had already died. Johnny starts out as a virgin loser who can't even walk two steps without passing out because he's so out of shape. But just like all problems in life, you can become better with money. Your time limit is an upgrade, your gun is an upgrade, literally just being allowed to jump is an upgrade. And the beginning of the game is really fun as you finally break out of that first little area and actually have to start dealing with enemies. I felt that the level was really short though, and expanding this game would have really made it a more enjoyable experience for me. The boss is baby easy too, and you basically just have to buy the max upgrade on time because it takes forever. I really love the concept, it's very similar to something like Duck Life but with the mechanics of a platformer. But other than the first two minutes, you just end up doing the same things over and over until you have enough time to beat the boss. In the case of an amazing concept executed a bit poorly, I think I've got to put this one in B. It's fun, but not perfect. B cubed immediately gave me Bloxor's vibes, and while they are a bit similar, the puzzles here are completely different. In each level you need to make each block fall and end on the red one. Each colored block has a different effect, like purple ones taking two hits instead of one. This leads to some incredibly complex levels, but I was really blown away by how cool some of these levels ended up being. This last level I played used the teleporting block so perfectly, and it felt extremely satisfying to get right. A lot of levels I also just kinda aced on my first try, leading me to believe this isn't too hard of a game. Or my mom was right all along, and I really am special! Because I am better at this game, I ended up preferring it to block stores. I love all puzzle games, but this one in particular was really, really fun. I wouldn't put it on the same level as games like Run or Big Tower Tiny Square though, so it will go in A. 
Hold on guys, shut up. I got this sick ad where a shark eats a bunch of goldfish, the natural prey of the shark. Man, that ad was S tier. Anyways, tiny heist time. The graphics are immediately super charming to me, so I cannot wait to play. Heists are like the perfect subject for games. You're a crazy little thief trying to steal as much as possible without getting caught. Stealth can be pretty frustrating at times, but I was super happy to discover that you can get caught and still beat a level. They should have gave me a gun at one point. I was shooting down dogs and guards like they were going out of style. I love the movement of the levels too. Guards and security cameras only move when you do, so you can plan out your strategy or just make a run for it. You can use items like a banana peel to keep your run going, and it is exhilarating to have every guard see you and still make it out just fine. I would love to see a pro make their way through these randomly generated levels, but I am not good enough to get very far. This is not my style of game at all, but I had a blast playing it. A tier, again. Man, Big Tower Tiny Square 2 is so much fun. What? What do you mean I need to move on? Fine, I'll play Cargo Bridge, but it better be good! If you've ever played a bridge construction game before, you basically played Gargo Bridge. The only thing you're missing out on is their screams of terror. Ah! Ah! Now we should make the elephant from snoring make that sound. Ah! And I kid you not, I wrote that in the script and then clicked next level, and the literal elephant from snoring was there! That is actually insane! The fun thing about Cargo Bridge is that you need to bring boxes back across the bridge. So even if it was sturdy enough the first time, it could still break from the added weight. Sometimes your bridge is really steep, and the guys can't even make it up. Other times you wait a whole minute for them to walk around, only for the bridge to break at the last second! And that was my real complaint. There isn't like an undo button, and there isn't a speed up option, so it takes a long time to do anything in this game. It's just a bit slow for me. And so what if I did forget to use wood suspension and just place roads for nearly every level? I'm not stupid, you are! C tier! Moto X3M is perpetually in the top 10 played games on the site. And I hate to burst everyone's bubble, but... What makes this game special? I want to be very clear here because I know people love this game. I love it too, the genre of bike racing games are really fun. It mixes a driving game, a platformer, and a physics based game into one package. And the crazy scenarios this game gives you definitely help make it stand out. But man, for anyone who likes this game, you should really try Trials Frontier. It is like the quintessential bike game, in my opinion. Another thing that really bothered me was the insane camera. It would randomly zoom out and back in, constantly making me unaware of what was next. It's fine to zoom in and out, but make it gradual. Don't suddenly just do it, it's jarring. I imagine people are gonna get sick just trying to watch this. I really do apologize if you love this game because it is fun, but it's just too flawed to place higher than C. In 60 Second Burger Run, you are a morbidly obese man trying to reach the hamburger store in time. You know, it really is the simple things in life, huh? The game is literally 60 seconds long and either you beat it or you don't. You slowly memorize each level to beat the game, which is cool, but I feel like Johnny Upgrade was kind of the same idea, except way better? Don't get me wrong, being a fat guy is great, of course. I kinda made this game myself once, actually. In Mario Maker 2, I made a level called Fat Attack, and it's real, I'll show you the level code. My me is named Lil Cutie, so don't be put off when you see my little bundle of joy show up. In the level, Mario is such a chonker, he breaks the bricks as you land on them. Basically, what I'm getting at is, I made a better version of this game without even knowing the game existed. C tier. As I'm sure you've all realized by now, my IQ is definitely in the double digits, so I think I can manage a game called IQ Ball. Now let's just see here. Wait, what the chuck? I definitely played this game last time, right? Put them up side by side. Literally the only difference is the freaking ball. But the levels actually are different and IQ Ball is way more fun. I really don't understand what difference there is here. I tried looking it up and couldn't find anything. Does anyone know? Is this a conspiracy? Is the red pill IQ ball and the blue pill is catch the candy? I want to be blue pilled so bad, let me be blue pilled! I've been cursed with a massive IQ today. Ignorance is bliss, they say. Well, while IQ ball has better levels, it ain't going higher than B, I'm telling you that right now. A lot of people came to me and said that Far of Fallout was extremely underrated and nobody talks about it. But if no one talks about it, then why the hell did so many people want me to play it? I think you guys took the blue pill too. This game seems adequately ranked amongst my comment section. Anyways, here's the gameplay. So yeah, this was made by Bart Bonti, Bart, Bart, Bart Bond, Bart, by the creator of Sugar Sugar and Factory Balls. He made a lot of famous games on the site, and everyone loves him. But I'd have to guess this was one of Bart B, Bart, Bart Bonnie, Bart, Bart Simpson's first games. It's 60 second burger rod without a time limit or funny fat man. It's big tower tiny square without the exciting platforming. It's tiny heist without the stealth. What do you get when you remove all those elements? Pixelated Peppa Pig in a maze. 
It's cute, sure, but I just can't be bothered when I know all the other games bar Tholomew made. I love his games, and if you love this one too, that's great. I just want to explain why I'm putting it in D tier. Sorry guys. It's honestly pretty impressive how well you can move the arm around and truck loader. I was waving, I was dancing, I was really feeling myself, you know? I was also loading the truck like they wanted, but that really came second to the dancing thing. It's a great little puzzle game, and while the elevators are extremely annoying and always in the way, you're bound to enjoy this one. It really reminds me of a game I can't remember the name of, but I loved to play as a kid. You had a dump truck ass, sorry, force of habit, I mean an actual dump truck, and you had to deliver a bunch of rocks across a level. It was a bumpy drive, so you tried not to let too much fall out before the end. I really love that game, and I hope someone in the comments knows the name. Now that we've filled out our missing persons report, let's put truck loader and B tier. The menu screen is literally just a baby with a gun. I love cool math games. Although, afterwards, he started flossing and putting on bras and, uh... Yeah, okay, I still love you cool math games. This is one of those games where you change your aim and power to shoot at your enemies. I've seen this done with bow and arrows and cannons and castles. But here it's just baby shooting babies. I assumed this was a kid's game, but then my dog got murdered, and my black teammate got targeted, and the pirate captain said he was going to kick my ass. That's not even a joke, look at the screen right now. The final boss is literally your parents. I get to kill my parents? My edgy dream finally comes true? I ended up having a blast with this one. I think it's just a fun idea, even if there are a ton of games like it. I'm saying S tier. It's literally just a hangman, right? And they removed the hanging part? What's the point of playing a game if I don't get to kill somebody? Well, he still can't get eaten by the monster, so I guess it's okay. I really was not expecting to care about hangman, but it's pretty dang addicting. Multiplayer hangman is a good idea, and I bet with some friends it could get really competitive. The players I was up against couldn't even guess doctor, so it wasn't too tough to win. But trying to get a high score is generally a lot of fun. It helps that there are multiple categories, with some fun ones like no repeating letters. Dude, you can't call them dwarfs anymore, haven't you heard? They're miners now, jeez! I ended up playing this one for way longer than planned, and I'm gonna give it an A. Diggy is another one of the upgrade games, which is definitely cool math games bread and butter, but I'm starting to get a little bored of these. Digging to the center of the earth could be fun, but the whole point is just finding as much money as possible. There aren't enemies or obstacles, you just dig down and hope to get lucky. Finding a dead whale is fun, I guess, but not enough is happening for me to enjoy it. I know it's very similar to learn to fly, just vertical rather than horizontal, but I don't know. Flying as far as possible is just more exciting than digging down, I think. It ain't bad, but it's going in B. Man, I love playing Angry Birds. Oh come on, you're gonna make me play a different game again? So what if I'm easily distracted? Can you blame me? Listen to Stinky Steve's braps! <laughs> Seriously, this is so freaking cool. Thank you, Velvet Bird. You can play this mod too from the download on my Discord. Anyways, these tanks better be just as awesome as the title suggests they are. As yet another upgrade game, at least you got a straight up tank to upgrade. The different weapon choices are really awesome, but truthfully, once your laser is upgraded, it's all over for the enemy tanks. Unlike some of the other upgrade games on the list, this one seems appropriately long enough and the upgrades feel like they changed the gameplay enough. You actually have to be a little skilled to beat this one, and that's a nice challenge to have. I'm not usually a big fan of games like this, but I thought it was done very well. A tier. Guys, check out Color World! Honestly, I thought it was going to be a bit more colorful. Using a cannon, you must shoot at each box to fill them with the correct color. You can also shoot super strong or very weak, in a similar way that Raft Wars worked. It was a cute little puzzle game, and while the graphics are pretty horrendous, I was starting to enjoy myself. But then I got to this level. Am I stupid, people? Because this game is making me think I'm stupid. I don't know how I'm supposed to color this box, but it just won't let me. Slap this sick on D before I go in Sino style on this part. There is no game, and it's one of those games that has no right being on cool math games. It's cooler than any math game I've ever played. Oh, and also, it's not a game. I almost forgot. It's you versus the narrator who tries to convince you that this is not a game, only for you to start messing with him and make it get a game. I played this thing a bunch of times before, so I knew most of the solutions, unfortunately, but that doesn't mean it's a bad game. How could a bad game let you say there is a goat, and then a goat appears? It's amazing! The idea of a game existing in something that is not supposed to be a game is just fun, and finding the narrator pleases the inner brat in us all. While this game is very short, it is too great to not give S tier. This one wasn't suggested very much, but I was told it was a newer, really well-made escape game. I am a sucker for escape games, and we haven't played any yet in the series, so I decided I need to check it out. Immediately, this is the best looking cool math games game graphically. It looked really good, and the style almost felt like claymation or something. We are stuck in this bathroom with some really unique puzzles to solve. 
There's a pentagram in the middle, but as you go, the shape changes to a fish and even the face of a pumpkin. It took a while, but I felt so satisfied to solve the slide puzzle and make it out, only for me to realize that that was the first room in a massive game. I played this thing for an hour and a half just to beat it, which is definitely the most time I spent on a cool math games game for these videos. And let me tell you, it was freaking worth it. I felt like such a genius with the connections I made. The puzzles are so well done, and when everything lines up just right, it makes each puzzle that much more exciting. I literally got to build a puzzle in this game! I played a good amount of escape room games, but none had puzzles quite like this one. And again, I was able to figure out everything on my own. They really give you all you need to solve this thing. The game ends by making your way back to the bathroom and crawling down the ladder. And let me just prove that I beat it here. I am blown away by this game, and I challenge you to beat it without using a walkthrough. This is like the next ice bucket challenge. I'm challenging Homer Simpson. Amazing game. Easy S tier. I think I was brainwashed by Jacksepticeye when I was a kid. I thought this was called Speed is Key for some reason. Speed is Key! I ended up playing through all of this one too, but rather than an hour and a half, it took a nice eight minutes. Space literally is key. It is the only key, and you simply jump over each obstacle. Not complex in any way, but insanely fun. Games like this work when you are instantly respawn, allowing you to retry again and again without waiting or hitting a button. It makes it so much more enjoyable. While this was a very nice breather after the last game, and it was pretty fun, it's insanely simple. It'd be weird to give it more praise than a C tier. With a title like Eggy Car, I feel like the point of the game is pretty self-explanatory, but at the same time, what the freaking hell is an Eggy Car? Yeah, big shocker, it's a car with an Eggy. As we all know, eggs are very fragile, so you need to keep it from breaking at all costs. I literally wrote all that out before starting the game, and what do you know, I was spot on. That's not a bad thing though, it's a great idea. If only this wasn't a ported toddler mobile game. A porta potty stinky goo goo guy game. If the lazy visuals weren't enough of an indication, look at the pedals on screen. Huh, almost like they want me to use my fingies to touch those. It got pretty addicting, but at the same time, it's the exact same level that never ends that just can't take for longer than 10 minutes. There are unlockable cars, but the first one's literally the best one. I can't lie, I pulled off some six stunts with the sports car, and that felt awesome, but then it got stuck and I cried epic style. There's a freeze power-up that lets you drive so fast the camera can't keep up with you, but it usually just makes me lose anyways. I'd really recommend just trying to get a high score for like 10 minutes and then never play it again. Still, D tier. I wonder how many Bloons fans are going to be mad I didn't put the classic monkey in the thumbnail. Oh well. A lot of people said I should play Bloons 3, but that felt unfair as I chose Duck Life 1 and Learn to Fly 1, when the sequels are arguably better. Let's see if the series was always good or if the original was a bit rough. I think it's no secret at this point that I suck at Bloons games. I called the Moab the Moab last time. For some reason, they just don't click with me. My brain doesn't work the way these games expect it to. Maybe I'm just not monkey-pilled, I don't know. It's also pretty weird to see it in such a bare-bones state. Playing Bloons 6 before this one is a crazy contrast. There's only 5 towers in this game, and I'm so bad I barely got past the Dart Monkey. It's hard not to compare this one to the much better sequels, you know? Bloons CD6 is an absolute S-tier game. Bloons CD3? Certainly not bad. But the original? As a Bloons game, I'd have to say D, but as a cool math games game, maybe, maybe a C. And there go all my viewers. Well, it was nice knowing you. Last but not least is, of course, Red Ball. I don't actually know what site Red Ball is on first, but somehow this game is huge in the speedrunning world these days. That's honestly pretty cool. I had a dilemma here as well, where Red Ball 4 is kind of the new reboot of the series, but technically that's a 4 in the title, not a 1. The original Red Ball isn't even on cool math games anymore. But again, it wouldn't be fair, so take a nice long look at the smug little red face ball on the screen. I miss the days of smiles being drawn like that. I'm just going to tell you all right now, ask me to rank cool math game sequels because you're all going to hate me after this video. I know Red Ball is a classic, I know that, but, but, it's just not that fun, okay? I like the train level, that was neat, I like this little Pac-Man mouth, but we played platformer after platformer today. If you actually think the original Red Ball beats Big Tower Tiny Square, you're on narcotics! Let's all acknowledge that this game goes in the hypothetical Nostalgia S tier alongside Snail Bob and Balloons, and then try to put it in the real D tier quickly before no one notices. Despite what ranking your favorite game received, it's made it to the list, which means it's good enough for something. There are tons of cool math games games that will never make the list because they simply cannot compare. They may be the coolest math these games around, but unless people love the game, it ain't gonna get a spotlight. Some really unfortunate games got sniped today, and I'd like to take a moment of silence for Farafala and Red Ball. <coughs> Sorry, hopefully that was silent enough. I know people love these games, otherwise they wouldn't have suggested them. I love them too! We all play these games as kids and love them no matter how they compare to others. 
but deep down, we all know the truth. It hurts sometimes to admit, but outside of them being nostalgic, they aren't great games to revisit. And even if you do think they are great games, I totally respect your opinion, and this tier list is simply mine. Anyways, I'll stop mansplaining how tier lists work, I guess. I love cool math games, and I love the series. Thanks for showing up the support you've given it. Don't tell me you guys still aren't satisfied! What, now you're gonna tell me I miss Bob the Robber and Rotate and Roll? Man, you are insatiable! Well, if you really want to see it, I've definitely gotten more than 20 requests for other games, so we could do a part 3. But you gotta speak up! If you want it, leave a comment and give me some game suggestions. If you've forgotten, we're trying to track down all of Snail Bob's long lost relatives. I've lost count, so let's go through the list again. Pretty sure we found a couple of new ones since last time. Let's see, there's Snail Groth One Finger, Snail Cobalt Chrome E, Snail Patrick Byer John, Snail Honamaki, Snail Adamin Fancore, Snail Bright Streak, Snail MD Switchy, Snail Gall Guy, Snail Daisy, Snail Dolphin Rider H2O, Snail Dojo Master, Snow Omegon, Snail Carl Williams, Snail Kristoff Creations, Snail Eduardo Santiago, Snail Generic Toho Fan, Snail It's Me Alley, Snail Pez Dispenser, and Snail You Are an Idiot. If you are one of Snail Bob's long lost relatives, then grab your invite to the family reunion and become a member of the channel today. Seriously, we should rank sequels next. Not necessarily the second game in the series though. Let me know what the best Duck Life is, what the best Run game is, what the best Red Ball version is, and I'll make the most stacked list of cool math games games the world has ever seen. Can't freaking wait. Don't die! 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 Yeah! <laughs> Whoa!